Whoa, and just like that, the explosion in Paris has happened. The explosion of one of the greatest moments in rugby history, and especially within the South African rugby history, happened last night. I don't know where you were. I don't know what you were doing. I don't know who you were sharing those moments with. All I can say is that uh, do share those with us right here on hashtag MSW Mara Sports Worldwide. Uh, the WhatsApp voice note number, yeah, flat it 0607080484, 0607080484. And remember, FNB has always been a big fan uh, of sports, and that is why Reaction Mondays with FNB, a proud sponsor of the Springboks FNB, a division of First Rand Bank Limited, live on 947 Rise FM, Vuma FM, and of course, Sowetan Live. But one thing that's always been so certain and magnificent in the game of rugby is seeing that how supported the game is from a sponsorship side. I mean, so many major companies throw their weight behind the game and also the players individually. And one of those big-time sponsorship players uh, that has for a very long time supported South African rugby from grassroots level all the way to international grades is none other than the banking giants FNB. So from primary schools to the Springboks, men, women, FNB's commitment and contribution to unearthing raw talent uh, is truly unmatched and worthy to be acknowledged. They're also our official sponsor, and proudly so, right here on hashtag MSW on Reaction Monday. Uh, let's chat now to Marie van Niekerk, a senior sponsorship specialist, FNB brand experience, uh, to find out more on their efforts to giving raw talent the spotlight to shine. Marie, so good to see you so far from Thank home, you, but also a place yes. that we have now made home, which is France. Totally, yes. It's wonderful to be here and thanks for having me on the show. And what was your experience of last night before we get to the business of F&B? I tell you what, the fact that I've got nails left is, <laughs> is truly an achievement. <laughs> yes. One of those moments, I suppose, that oh. you would take right at the top of yes. the pile, hey? Yeah, no, it's, it's not even bucket list. It's above the bucket list <laughs> incredible so yes. such an honor to have you and as i said we we're very honored to be partnering with you right okay. here on the show yeah on reaction so monday mm. yeah i mean if and be involved in different sporting codes uh, one of them being rugby yes. uh, tell us why though does F and B support rugby yes well we've been supporting rugby for a very long time we've started with our schools program the FNB Classic clashes in 2001 and there we support uh, rugby and, and uh, netball and then we also support the FNB Varsity Cup which is a varsity rugby yeah. program and then in 2017 we started supporting the Springboks so that, that kind of uh, brought it full circle so we um, you know we're very interested in and it's not only rugby but also other sports like netball football etc we we are interested in developing sport from a youth level yes. so a grassroots level so that we can really um, you know build that pipeline of talent from the youth through to uh, universities and then ultimately at a na national level. But it sounds very strategic. If you had to zero in on why that strategy, especially within grassroots, is so important for FNB. Well, you know, we are so deeply invested in South Africa. And, um, you know, for us, it's a nation building exercise. And I think if you look at rugby specifically uh, over the last few years, it's it's been one of the the big sports that that gives South Africans hope that yeah. that that absolutely unites us and makes us so passionate and last night I saw it again it yeah. was just like it's crazy yes crazy crazy lovely crazy I mean, we, we all love it. We love the moments and I think still the moments that are still to come. It's only a semi-final stage right now and w w when you talk about you know F&B classic clashes fnb yes. varsity cup I mean, yes. what are some of these success stories though that have come through those programs any of those that spring to mind Mary? yes there's a lot uh, there's actually too many to mention yeah. here but if if you think of uh varsity cup there's 54 spring box that came through varsity cup through the time that uh, since 2008 when when we started with that sponsorship and then for fnb classic clashes there's 105 um, Springbok players that came through uh, through the uh, our school's program FNB Classic Clashes, and now if you just think of the 2019 team, mm -hmm. the 2019 uh, Springbok team, there was 13 players that played in Japan that came through either Classic Clashes or Varsity Cup, 
And this year as well, there's 13 players wow. that, that came through. So, so that means a third of the squad was touched by some of our uh, rugby programs. Mm. And just uh, a couple of, um, you know, names. So Kurt Lee Aronser, he was at uh, University of Western Cape. Um, and uh, Eben Etzebet, he played at Tigerberg High School and then he went to, uh, to UCT, University of Cape Town. Uh, Damien Dalende also played for Varsity Cup, uh, University of Cape Town. And then Marnie Libok, he's an old Tux guy, wow. um, and he played for Tux. Uh, yeah, so so you know, it's 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 they've they've been um, part of the can I call it F and B fold. The so DNA, a young I suppose. Age. Yeah. Yes, yes. It, it's crazy is. though because mm. it's th these are all points contributors uh, yes. to the box as well. Yes, yes, especially last night. I know that's what I'm saying. <laughs> it's just the sheer yes. irony of the, the yes. names that you're rolling yeah. out now, and yeah. I'm thinking back to the game last night, and I'm like, wow, uh, you must be proud of what the end yeah. product yes. of that conveyor belt uh, yeah. is all about, especially yes. when you can see that end product. Mm. Yeah. No, but then, just lastly, uh, Mario, you, you, your message of support though to the Springboks ahead of next week's fixture you know yeah this this <laughs> coming week it's a uh, it's the old foe <laughs> it's yeah. england <laughs> yes yes so um our campaign this year that we've done is uh hashtag box need you and what we've done is we've been collecting messages uh for the spring box for, from south african fans since March this year at our Varsity Cup, at Varsity Football, Varsity Netball, all our sporting um, codes at, at the fixtures that the Springboks played in South Africa. Um, and we're still collecting messages on our WhatsApp line. And what we are doing is we are actually uh, giving the messages to the Springboks in their team room where they are staying. So this is my job at the moment. We've got this big TV screen yes. uh, and we put all of our fan messages on there. So um, obviously they will need it more now than ever. And they, uh, you know, they've been from home for, yeah. for a long time, for more than two months. I think um, it's 65 and days now. Yes. And so now, uh, you know, they, they, they really need the support from home. So if you won't mind, I'll give that uh, WhatsApp number Absolutely. so that people can please send more messages. Mm -hmm. The WhatsApp number is 061-522-6553. Um, so please keep those messages coming in videos, uh, you know, copy messages, written voice notes, anything at all. We show it to the Springboks, and they so, so appreciate it. I'm going to ask you to repeat that number once again, please, Mario, okay. if you don't mind. The number is 061-522-6553. 653. So send those messages. I mean, we were at the bar camp the other day, and I saw that the screen is there as you yes. walked up the stairs yes. uh, at the hotel. And these messages keep coming through. It's beautifully laid out. It's, mm. it's verbal. There's written stuff as well. Little, yeah. very creative clips of what people have uh, decided yes. to do. So very practical. Yeah. And if you've been away from home for that long, you walk up and you say there's something that sounds very South African, and then you stop and you pause and you listen. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, fantastic. Really helps them. Yes. No, I mean very privileged. As I said, <laughs> um, as partners with us right here on hashtag MSW on Reaction Monday, partners within the Springboks. Great job that you're doing, you and the team. Keep it up, and I'm sure you're going to be looking forward to the final soon. Thank you very much. We all have our fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, to our conversation there with Marie van a senior sponsorships specialist, F&B brand experience, uh, just giving us the lowdown. And that number once again, 061-522-6553. 061 522 Send those messages, guys. Trust me, the players look at it every single day. Yeah, Murray, thank you so much indeed for chatting to us right here on hashtag MSW. It is a Monday. It is Reaction Monday, 18 minutes after the hour. The excitement across Paris for South African fans. And my, oh my, you know, South Africans, they travel, guys. People save up and they travel. And it was no surprise to see so many South Africans. I think yesterday when they put up the number uh, on, the, on the board, it said 79,486 who were in attendance. Uh, a good one. 10, 15,000 would have been South Africans. And amongst those would have been a Tando Manana, uh, who would have been there. He's part of the room dividers. A Siv Ngesi would have been there. 
Yeah, somebody who's photo and photos have been splashed right across the world uh, on the internet and elsewhere it's because of the passion that these guys have uh, for the beautiful game of rugby and when we come back from the break not only that we are going to be tapping into the press conference remember that uh, uh, the press conference was held at about uh, midday today Rassi Rasmus as well as um, his assistant Jan were uh, in attendance answering to all the media uh, answering all the questions that you and I would love to have. So we've tried to, because we can't play the entire um, press conference back to you. So we will sift through a couple of those uh, headline stories uh, that we think are important and that you would love to hear and to know about. So don't go anywhere. It is uh, the Barrow Sports Worldwide takeover here in Paris. We are in France uh, broadcasting live uh, Tracking down uh, the Springbok and what has been happening within the Rugby World Cup. And man, oh man, quarter final weekend. Uh, I mean, it's, it's always threatened to be exciting. Save the best for last kind of story. An extraordinary match. I think if you and I had to be honest, fluctuating fortunes ending uh, with French players scattered across the turf. I mean, part despair, part exhaustion, uh, deny the chance to prevail at their own World Cup. I mean, it would be, it would be South Africa, isn't it? Brimming. With all of that World Cup know-how, uh, who had progressed to the semi-final against England. The only team left in the tournament from the north. And that, again, says a lot about the dominance. I'll tell you what, I mean, this weekend, showcasing, as any set of quarterfinals should, the four best teams in the world, alas, they were playing against each other. So whatever opinions you have about the draw and how it was conducted and whether or not uh, the deserving teams are going to be playing semi-finals, that's an opinion that can never hold water right now. Ireland, New Zealand on Saturday could have graced any World Cup final. Yeah, I agree. Last night's game could have done the same. A contest of all ages. Pulsating quarterfinal in Paris. Holders defeating the host. 29-28. Just a single point uh, to progress to the last four. I mean, what a game we witnessed. The brilliant French free-running throughout dashed against Springbok Granite. That's the best way one can describe it. The result... Ends a run of what now? 18 straight wins at home for Le Bleu. Crashing out of the tournament with the box moving to face England in the semis. Let's look. Let's look back now at the game. A couple of brothers were joining me here. Uh, their passports all intact. They're still legally here in the country. They made it to France. They would rather say they would be eating amakuinha than they would be eating croissants. Huh? Eating prime meat than frog legs. <laughs> <laughs> and they're having a time of their life, you know. One of them is a room divider. And our special appearance man is a man who has adorned, I think, social media across the world right now. His scantily clad body in a fuff bit of underwear or lingerie, should I say, hey? Actor, comedian, TV presenter, friend of rugby, friend of sport, friend of the show, friend of everyone. Serving guests, good to see you. Award-winning actor, comedian, TV presenter. Multi. 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 Yeah, multi, multi award award-winning. Winning. Yes, yes, multi yes. award-winning. Guys, yesterday was something, like it sounds so cliche, but the country just needed that quarterfinal. Yeah. Like we need the semi and we need that World Cup to come back home. Um, I could see how much it meant to everyone uh, in the audience. Um, but there's something weird that happens when South Africans are overseas. I feel like we treat each other better. Like, do you just feel are like you my brother? Yeah, like brother, kiss on the lips. You're like, what? You know what I mean? Like, but there's just something very, very special. I felt it. My voice is gone, but mm. the passion is just palpable. It's alive. And I just hope the government isn't stealing more money because we're all distracted. I'm just... just um, you're just putting it out there. I was hoping it's not like a distraction. Do you think they would? I mean, who would when, <laughs> when the box are stealing points? You know? No, no. Yeah, that's only stealing yeah. that has been legal. For, for me, I, I, last night was one of, my, one of my life's greatest moments. I, I'll be honest, like sporting yeah. uh, moments. And I've watched a lot of sport. I've done a lot of things around the world. There was just something special. There's, we had no right to do what we did yesterday. We had, but we had, wh why do you say that it was so special? What was so special for you personally? And as you were alluding to, we had no right to. Mm -hmm. Anything could have happened. Those mm -hmm. extra two minutes that we were unfolding, hoping, crossing our fingers that there's going to be no penalty. Do you know when I knew it was done? Yeah. Is when Willemse marked the ball and then called for a scrum. Yes. Now, if you know rugby. Yes. If you know rugby, you have no right. First of all, as a, f as a, f as a forward, as a backline player, to call for a scrum. You are disrespectful, unless you're the captain. 
He, he caught the ball and then went scrum. Yes. Then I saw confidence. Hmm. Absolute confidence. And for me, it felt like Rassi said, if we lose, just make sure you give it everything and more and you make those mistakes at full speed. And give anything. And, and, and do any, for example. Because Chell, yeah. Colby as well. Yeah. Chesley Col- was the same. Yeah. yeah. Ch- 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 like, the you, charge down yeah. was from where? The first three minutes. Yeah. Uh, Eben. Eben went for an intercept. There's, why is the lock going for an intercept? I think he told them just go guns blazing. Mm-hmm. No one expects us to win. Mm-hmm. First of all, it's 75,000 people versus 5,000 South Africans. We were sick. And to another thing, white people, please learn another song about Shosho Loza. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired. I'm sick and tired. I'm a quitch. It's very easy. Yeah. Find a word that you know, a few words, and just repeat them over and over. Because another thing, we weren't beaten just by sheer numbers yesterday. They were beaten because we couldn't sing any songs except Shosho Loza, which they mess up. And secondly, the anthem, which is messed up, they mess up as well. But if we all learn a particular equich or something together that's a South African official equich. Well, give me, give me a minute of equich or right now that we could leave, we could play. So when you're so flying, we, we could, could play with, it over. Zumbi Tanagama Zumbi Ho 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 So you, all you have to do is just, you white people, you can just go Zumbi Danagama, Zumbe, Ka. And yeah. some people can go, Oh, 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 ta na 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 na. And then, yeah. We entered the stadium with only 20, like 20, 25 Quijo squads. Everyone stopped. Yeah. And was taking pictures. Yeah. So 25 people from South Africa used their own money. Yes, been saving for the past three saving years. Saving for the yeah. past three years and came to sing. And everyone, the French were taking selfies. We went on the bus. It was phenomenal. Now, if you could get 5,000 people to be in that stadium. Guys, it's enough. Let's, another thing for me is what gets me is that when I was in the stadium, and one, at one moment I thought to myself, kids in townships aren't seeing this. Yeah. Then I was like, then I felt a bit weird for a moment. Just a little moment. I was like, yeah. our captain is from a township but kids from a township were not watching this made me feel a bit uncomfortable at one position at one point because i was just like there's something's wrong here i've addressed it with a few people i yeah. won't mention their names yeah, yeah. but i i the next world cup i want i want viewing areas and townships i want five thousand people singing one song mm-hmm. and i think it's doable because I think the, the, the new age kids do try Shoshaloza yeah. and then the, the, the words disappear, then oh, yeah, it's back yeah, yeah. to Shoshaloza again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, but on, on, on the back of all of that, guys, listen, you, you can send your WhatsApp voice notes. This is an open conversation. South Africans gathering around after a massive triumph. We, we've had to hospitalize Tando Manana, his voice completely disappeared last night. I have not spoken to him the entire day. I, I, I don't know the state of his vocal ability right now. So, Mr. Manana? I know you're holding a microphone. Can it work, sir? Are you okay? Yeah, much better. Much better. Um, I was treating myself, um, but I don't blame myself. <laughs> Rob, I think I hear what Siv is saying. He makes nice, excellent points. Uh, I'm also of the view that yesterday's game backs against the wall is a game that sheer guts and determination got us through the finish line mm. i mean if if i look at the game i mean uh, it just replays on my mind and i'm saying in 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 your program that's probably the best rugby world cup game ever played in the Easy. 10 in Easily, the 10 right? in the 10 rugby world cups it's a fact yeah 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 but also we, I moved away from saying to myself that without a 5-3 split, we'd have lost that game. i tell you why. The French played better rugby with their first choice players. But the minute they changed to the bench, mm-hmm. our bench was superior, more elevated than them, and we swung it. Kwaha, but... That's still from Dian Furi. Yeah. That ten over for me. Kwaha was just from his from the word go Kwaha. Now if you look when Dwayne came back, 
We started to lose shape, but mm-hmm. then master stroke. Uh, when Bongi went off, we could be able to bring in Dwayne. Mm. Remember, we didn't have a hooker. Mm. We then took Dion to hooker to bring in Dwayne to play at eight. And we just made sure that we finish off the game well. Mm. Except for that unnecessary kick from Faf. That unnecessary kick with a minute to go. Yep. We must learn from those things. And I'm not saying anything against any player. I'm just saying yesterday's game, because we've got two critical games, especially knowing England would want to try and repeat a 2007 type of a final finish where it was very close. It was only, de- you know, depending on the kicks then. But I'm saying they would want to do 2019 mm. when they beat a mighty All Black in Japan in the semi finals. But we have to make sure we eliminate those small mistakes. But what, what is the positive turning point for you that led to the victory? I'll, I'll pose the same to Siv. That one magical moment, I think he mentioned the Damien incident. As, as a turning point for him or maybe a confidence booster for him but for you what was that magical moment where we were not really secured in the game I don't think we were until the final whistle yeah. but what was that turning point <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Th- Thomas Ramos far side of the field from where I was sitting French just scored a try the guy doesn't miss I was not even thinking that uh, I was already adding the score. Yes. And then all of a sudden, watching the time on the big wall, as he started moving forward, I saw a dynamite running, chasing like a cheetah. And that was Cheslin Colby. And it dawned at the back of my mind, Robert, Thomas Ramos plays for Toulon. Yes. Who played for Toulon? They, they, they know each other. Cheslin they knows know them. each other. Per second. The and Cheslin up. would mm. also be doing goal kicking. Yes. So they would wait for each other when it's practice. So he knew exactly when he's going to kick. Yes. But the French were very upset with like. No, 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 no. The referee, Ben Kifia, was in charge. Not the French. Yeah. <laughs> the French, for me, were always in charge. But it was not their house. Absolutely. Anton Dupont was also not happy about the referees yeah. as well. So what I'm going to do is, wh- while we talk about uh, the you know the refs issue, uh, so I'll bring you and I'll still come back to the magical moment for you. Anton Dupont criticizing the standard of refereeing after France crashing out of that uh, home World Cup. The box edging that epic clash. Sia Colisi responding to the comments, though, defended the fair referee and also praised Dupont's power of recovery as reflected on a thrilling knockout encounter. All we can do is play rugby. I mean, we can't control what decision the decision the, the ref makes. Um, and, yeah, I, I don't know. We will have to look at the game afterwards, but I thought the communications with him and um, the calls that he made, um, yeah, were fair. I mean, I will never... Um, I've never discredited the ref and I'll never do that but I don't know we'll have to look after after the game but yeah obviously he's got his own opinion but I thought the game itself was an amazing game and uh, it flowed and it was tough it was physical there was a lot of contest in the game um, I think um, the way both team plays outshines anything else out there and the atmosphere was amazing and I think that it was a perfect stage for everything with a strong French team, um, and I want to let you know what say. They've been building for four years, uh, this French team, and uh, we knew it was going to take something special for us to win this game. And because they are so good, and for their leader to be injured and do everything he can to come back for a game like this and play like he hasn't left uh, the, the, the field before. And yeah, we, we give all credit to them, and the French people have made this World Cup so special. The spirit, the vibe around, even. When the French team is not playing, when we're playing away team, we could hear the French national anthem. That's why we knew how loud it was going to be and how, how hectic it was going to be. I mean, we had the speaker in our training session so we can try and emulate the sound in our training session. Just me on that. I think I thought Ben was, was, was good on the day. Uh, obviously, you would say we won, and that's why I'm saying that. But I think we, we try to probably play in such a way that we, we, we try and take the referee out of the game. He scored four tries and I think all the opportunities that we had to score, uh, we maybe missed one or two but uh, and we missed one kick f- uh, from the tee. But when we had opportunities to score, we scored and I thought he managed it well. Uh. 
thought he managed it very, very well indeed. Well, I think it's a well-handled uh, question there by Captain Sia Kulisi at the press conference. A lot of you sending your WhatsApp voice notes. Excited, 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 aren't you? Demarawa, this is Oina from Mzinto. I would like to say congratulations to uh, Springboks, the box. Hey, um, I was wondering why you were talking about the pole. Eh? I saw that guy, man, I is very fast, quickly, play some nice rapi. I, it is a pleasure to watch that guy, man. It's very fast. He was giving us problems, man. Thank you, Rob. Yeah, definitely. The point is a problem. And as uh, Sia was saying, that uh, a person with a miraculous recovery from his injury. My Monday reaction goes straight to Paris. What a game we had. Um, what a performance by, by our team. Um, there was a stage where I thought we've lost it. Sia and his boys came back and they fought. I mean, if there's one thing about Springboks, they are, you know, they are fighting um, abilities to win the game. And one thing that I've noticed, I was a bit worried when Sia was taken out, but I was impressed by his sportsmanship. He was a guy that, that was on his feet more than the coaches. And for me, that just said good team spirit in that team. But otherwise, up the bogey. Um, I, you know, we, we, we watched that with my family and we were quite happy, um, you know, with the performance. But yeah, I wish them all the best going forward. All the box. Hey, all the box, all the way. Reaction Monday, hashtag uh, MSW right here on 947, Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live, wherever you are around the country, the continent, or the world. We are live in Paris. Tando Manana, Sivan Gesi, are my guests. I had posed the question before the break to Tando about the turning point, that one point that made magic for South Africa. From your side, outside of the Damien incident, what was it that, from a rugby perspective, won it for the box? You know, there, there's something about bringing on. Like, there's there's not many teams in the world that could bring on seven or eight eight people who can make it in any other team. Mm. When Kwaha came on, I knew it was going to be okay. Kwaha. Yes. But let's talk about also the perfect timing of this substitution. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, there was a moment when I thought. There was a moment when I thought he did it too soon. And I, there's a moment when I thought, you just took off 35% of your team, it's going to change, right? Um, I had a bit of a problem with Dwayne. I think I, I think Dwayne could be a little bit old. I think it could be the end is near. I, I, th- I don't think he'll start the next game. I think it's a swan song year for him. If you look, if you, it's a if, good word, swan song. Hey, yeah. That, so I need to use that one day. Yay, swan song. Hey, <laughs> hey, Pretoria. Hey, yeah, hey, I left the east. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rob, you can't buy experience. Yeah. Uh, you can't buy experience, and I tell you why. There was no way Dwayne was going to let us down mm. at that time knowing that this is his final year as a professional Springbok rugby player. I think it's an open secret that he'll start coaching as early as 2024 or end of 2023, just depending on him. But for me, we've got to understand that we need to mention a special name if we talk of replacement, Ox J. Mm -hmm. You have to mention that name. Yes. Ox J for me was just something else. He came on and he just stepped up. Uh, he's always disciplined. He just wants to grind. But yesterday he did more than that. Uh, he wanted it more. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in terms of, these are players that are still playing to start and wear the starting jerseys. He's not there just to fulfill that job. Mm. And I think I agree, but also I don't think against England, against Vunipola, you're going to want to bring in a Jasper Visa. Whether he, he plays with them or he also plays in the England League, but he's just not been performing for you to say, Dwayne, sit this one out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think for me that's important. I think also <coughs> the, the, the importance of us having a different... <laughs> it's just, Rob, I know Vili was there, mm-hmm. but I just, I just think player 24-25, that should be him going forward. I, I, I just think at some stage we, we, we just have to understand uh, that we need just someone that can 
can can he, he did well when he came but i'm just saying my well means at some stage we're just going to need an extra bit of pace towards the end mm. just to finish them off but but overall we can't be looking at we look we look at the positive positives is just too many we were we were nearly <laughs> rob we nearly never visited their 22 meter area that worried me we need to play rugby like Steve saying we need to play rugby mm. that gets us to the striking zone mm. and we didn't play that rugby. we we actually in the first half depended on a lucky bounce of the ball curtly rnc goes and scores that's mm. from a kick up bounces favors him he runs he outpaces everyone on the far side as well similarly what happened a good work move was the urban it's a best try uh, that we played there so i just think we've just got to try and play rugby that we are able to work our own tries like we did in the world cup we worked both of our tries and we're able to do something special i think before time swallows us all because i mean we can talk the game we can talk the tactics we can talk so many different dynamics and you pretty close to the captain usia kolisi uh, I want to try bring that element in here so that you can share with us because at the end of the day, this is a, a global icon. This is an icon now who is into his second leadership captaincy World Cup where potentially, again, he's on the threshold of making history if he does come back and defend a World Cup. What's he communicating? I'm sure you guys have spoken today. What, what is he saying? I mean, it doesn't have to be anything that yeah. is... You know, yeah. we'll see... I when you hang out with Usia, you forget about Usia Kolisi, man. Yeah. Like, um, but you can see that they have a team narrative. There's a team words that they use. You can see there's an agreement on what's the mission, what is the goal, what what are we trying to achieve? You can yeah. feel that. There's a there's a very humble, a humble confidence about them. Um, but there's a realism as well. Mm. You know, do you know that Usia? I called them the night before they played England in the last World Cup, the final, the mm -hmm. hardest game ever after yeah. they beat New Zealand. What do you, oh, we're going to kill them. It's in God's hands. And yeah, he has that thing about him. Mm. He has, I look forward to hanging out with Sia when he's not captain again. Just to be able to J. Just because now I think, you know, I think that he's going to create and do even better things after rugby. You've, you've narrated very publicly at times that he is the person that many did not have faith in. Oh, yes. He is the person I, who a lot of people say, why have you got this person as your I captain? got dragged for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got attacked for that. But many people were calling him a quota. Many people were saying he's not the... No, but now they idolize him. But we see you fake people. But for me, there's just something about him. He, he saw the haters. He, they were in his face. They were in his ear. There were tweets there. Um, and for me, he's a special human. And I look forward to seeing what he's going to do and the lives he's going to change. But he's selfless as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, they took him off at 45 minutes. Yesterday, he, he wasn't at his best yesterday. You, 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 let's, let's admit that. He wasn't yeah. at his best yesterday. When they took him off, he could have he could have had a, a bit of a tantrum. Yeah, they yeah. took him off at 45 minutes. But I think he knew he wasn't at his best. And he went off. Uh, there's something but, special. I mean, him. there was visibly a disappointment, like yeah. any human being would. Settled down maybe for two minutes, yeah. then realized there's, he can't give yeah. the reaction that the world wants to yeah. see because constantly the camera kept going to him. Yeah. And then you know what? He was on his feet. He was playing part of the yeah. technical team captaincy role that he should play and conducting the traffic, encouraging the guys from the sidelines. And that's what you want to see uh, from a leader, from a captain. And you, you, you would be one to admit as well, Manana, that... Um, when a captain is not playing well, the title captaincy should not then make you stay longer. It's it's all about the game plan. I mean, I said it yesterday. Bongi Monambi in this World Cup and before this World Cup was groomed to take over whenever Sia has to come off. So I think in terms of that leadership role within the team, the captain's armband would always go to Bongi. Uh, if he's in the team, that is quite evident in front of everyone to see now. But also I think you've got to understand that Sia is the, still the only player that has not donned the number six. Uh, I mean, has not, has not set out any games. Mm -hmm. So this was, this was the fifth straight game in the World Cup. We've got two more to go. So I, <clears throat> I would say 
if they felt that he was not on song, they need to take him out and bring in fresher legs. That's a coach's prerogative to do. We we have it's it's, not, it's got nothing to do with us. But I think he's 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 learned to accept that. Yeah, he's learned to accept that. He it's no longer for him a, a question mark. He just walks off and just supports the team from the outside because he understands that. That doesn't mean he's going to be drop drop. Mm. I think in the past, if you get subbed earlier, you think next weekend you're not playing, you're out. No. You're out. no. Mm. I think with him, he'll still lead the team. He'll still be the captain, and I think he's still got to give us. You know, two more games uh, to take us through uh, in this World Cup. So I'm happy with with how things are done. I think mm. also, Rob, what we and Steve spoke about it. What what we don't understand is we don't know what's happening in that box camp. We don't know what the chat. We we have to wait for post competition to hear exactly what was happening, what was being planned. Mm. Uh, chasing the sun too will tell us again what happens and what have you. So for me. Selection-wise, very few players in the team are guaranteed their places in the team. Usia is one of those people that would be there. Whether he plays 80 minutes, 75 minutes, 45 minutes, it's a prerogative of the two coaches. But I think yesterday, credit must go to that, to that technical um, uh, box. Yeah. That technical box was sound. That technical box was instrumental. For example... Pollard came on. Pollard came on. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of calmness in the team. Uh, we knew exactly what he's going to offer us. The only thing that I was a bit disappointed was we didn't go for the three-pointers. When we got a penalty, we went out and we stuffed that line out and I was like to myself, there goes the game. But fortunately enough, we were able to score from... He went for the long punt as well. He went so, for the long punt as yeah, well. Absolutely. So, so, so for me, I, I think Manny Leboc, uh, he did his job, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, he was kicking to the right-hand side, mm. right, continuously, if you notice. Mm -hmm. That's because that guy is a 20-year-old uh, wing, inexperienced. Mm. So they were attacking him non-stop. When Pollard came on, a lot of people, for me, I wouldn't mind if Vili doesn't come on, but anyway. But <laughs> I know why Vili's on. Because Vili becomes the fly-off when Pollard is there. Yeah. Because Pollard is not as creative as Manny Leboc. Agreed? Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. And if you want the ball to go and move, you need Vilith to be there. And he can be either get the right-hand side pass or the left-hand side pass. So sometimes I understand why Pollard. I think for me, Faf, Pollard and Vili are like a package deal. Yeah. Right? And they work well together. But the question is, Kubis. Does Kubis put enough pressure on the number nine as much as, as, much as Faf does? Because I love Kubis on attack especially. But for me, Faf, little nippy, relentless. Mm. Like, it's like a fly. It's like a fly. It will not stop. Yeah. But he does... Uh, DuPont did play better first half than he played the second half. And that could be because of Kwaka. And that could be because of Dion Fori and Faf. I'm still not sure which one it is. But I do think Faf was involved in pressurizing the, the, the number nine. I have to say, Ko Ko Kobas was... was uh, he did just the normal job. There was nothing special about, about him there. So I see when you go to the semis... Definitely number nine who could be twitched a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm of the view. If you look at the end, Rob, when we were under tremendous pressure, Faf and Peter Steff was able to fight for that ball and just pulled it out, knocked it on before we kicked it out and it was game over. That's what Faf gives you. Faf just gives you a little bit of extra, uh, upon extra than any other scrum half there. And I think for me, Rob, overall, Overall, team selection is going to be cr critical. Mm. The bench is going to be critical. Who starts is going to... I mean, even Mostert. Mostert was quiet as well. So you you find that from certain players that Mostert was quiet. But yes, yes, I would love to see Eben and Archie start a game. I don't know if it will happen, but really, I would love to see Eben and I would love to see Archie, even if it yeah. means then... A guy like Peter Steff has to do the line out jumping because yeah. he can do that if it's, if it's an issue. But I'm just saying, imagine we go with those two enforcers and then you bring on someone like a Jean Klein in the mix going forward. Then it means we, it's brutal 
brutal force upon brutal well, force. Well, I think those are some of the comments as well that we're going to get into in uh, tomorrow's show when we do the room dividers. We'll get into the into the media room, into the newsroom of what uh, Coach Rusty Rasmus has had to say about it because he spoke about the scrums, he spoke about the refereeing uh, situation. So don't miss the room dividers. Uh, we will bring an exclusive uh, coverage of that live from Paris on the show tomorrow, including the comments from the press conference that we'll dissect here with the guys. Um, Siv, just, I know, I didn't speak to you about this. Uh, we've got all of 20 seconds before we leave the show. The, the gentleman sitting next to you today is his birthday. And I heard that you can sing. So please, Five, four, three, two, one. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear pa. Happy birthday to you. Minamandi. Go away, Minamani, go away, Minamani, go away, Pujan, Minamani, go away, Hoodman. That was Sam Gessi, ladies and gentlemen, in saying happy birthday to our room divider here at Tanda Banana. Gentlemen, you've been absolutely great. Time has overtaken us. All the best. Travel well, travel safely, sir. And thank you very much for being part of the show. Mr. Banana, we'll catch you again tomorrow on the room dividers. Hashtag MSW. Are you ready? Malala Sports Worldwide.